conflicts, protests, and wars around the world have led many people to flee persecutions and to seek safety wherever possible. Some of us have found ourselves here in the UK. I arrived in the Northeast eight years ago, and the change since then has been dramatic. These are just some of the people who have made a difference. Here's their stories and their views on what we need to do to make even more changes here in the region. Gabi Kitoko is in his 30s from the Democratic Republic of Congo. He was a medical student at the Faculty of Medicine in the University of Kinshasa. Gabi worked as a volunteer for the International Committee of the Red Cross. He was involved in student politics in Kinshasa and was forced to seek asylum here in the UK in 2000. Like many, he was dispersed by the Home Office to live here in Newcastle. Gabi describes how it was like eight years ago when he first arrived. We cannot blame uh, uh, local people. They didn't know much about African people. It was uh, first experience to see a large number of Africans to their street. So there was a little bit reserved. They didn't know how to approach those people, how to deal with them. So um, in African side, this is, was kind of shock. Oh why we are here, and the people don't even show up to say hello or welcome. Are we strange? Is that a place to, to stay? At this time, we had a lot of African people moving uh, to the south because they found that it was hard. Like many of us who arrived here with no English, Gabi recognizes the importance of learning the language and the difficulties associated with the lack of communication. For me, English is everything. You cannot here get a job if you cannot speak English. You cannot interact with your neighbor if you cannot speak English. And I didn't speak English first when I, when I came here. And it was hard for me. I do remember even communicating with my GP or other people using my dictionary. <laughs> Sara Hamadi is 44 years old from Afghanistan. She arrived in the UK almost seven years ago and has been living in Sunderland. Sara studied media and cultural studies at the University of Kabul. She became a journalist and worked in Afghan TV and radio where she produced programs for women. When the Taliban came to power in Afghanistan, women were no longer allowed to study or work. Sara started teaching women in her house like many of us, Sarah experienced initial difficulties on arrival here in the UK. Since I arrived here in the first time, and I had very difficulty because uh, I couldn't speak English. Uh, I didn't know the people. I didn't have friends and family. I had a, a very, very difficult time. We will hear more about Sarah's pioneering work with communities in Sunderland. But first, we meet Tayyip Kaznazani. He is 30 years old and from Iraq. He arrived in the UK in 2000. Tayyip was a barrister in criminal courts in Iraq. He was involved in student politics and that caused him to flee his country. Having found safety here in Middlesbrough and after experiencing firsthand the problems of settling in a new country, Tayyip has gone on to study English. 
he quickly got involved in helping people from his community to integrate here in Teesside. The Kurdish community is one of the single biggest refugee community groups here in the Northeast. Tayyip has established the Kurdish community program to help Iraqis avoid the problems he himself experienced. He has become the voice of refugees and asylum seekers in the area, and his voluntary work has been reported in the local press and on TV nationwide. People who they are staying in this country without integrating into the community, it's always hard to, to cope and to live. And the key things for that is the language. Language is very important. And it is a priority as the first step of integrating. So, so learning English proved to be a vital first step for we, new Northeasterners. The next step for Gabi was to work as a volunteer in different organizations to help others. He gained the crucial experience that helped him to make a difference. I went as a volunteer to different organizations. I've applied myself as an interpreter and go through uh, interpreting service to try to, not just as a professional, as well to support these people because there was lack of African language interpreter in an office. Interpreting is not about translating. It's about understanding the person, to have a little bit of an idea about uh, uh, his background so you can now translate it. Sarah also learned English and overcame the language barrier. She established the Afghan British Community Association and ever since has been actively involved in voluntary and community activities. Just one of her many responsibilities are English classes in the winter gardens for newly dispersed asylum seekers and also for economic migrants. If uh, they couldn't speak English, has, uh, you know, they couldn't get a job or they couldn't integrate with the local community or they couldn't do any activity. Uh, some of these asylum seekers are not allowed to do the courses at the college. I try to provide this possibility for them to when they arriving in here. Also, when they finish the um, classes with us and after we contact the job center, or uh, some different organization, and we send them these people uh, for the work. If uh, some of these to allow to work here, but if they are not work, we send them to the college. Uh, and also we have uh, another courses, as I mentioned, in the, for the um, uh, Polish bus driver. They are already um, employed, but uh, they couldn't speak English. Uh, they're doing their job. When they are free, uh, they are coming to the class, they are learning English to do their job properly. One year after his arrival, Gabi decided it was not just up to the local agencies to have to produce solutions for integration. He set up the African Community Advice Northeast, known as AKAN, in order to help his fellow Africans to settle in their new environment. Communication help to respond to the actual need of our members in terms of bringing a local uh, community and a member of the African community together. And we thought that our community center is the best place. This project was a research from Diamond University where they want to identify which barrier those asylum seekers and the refugee children within the African community they are facing in the school. There was a great outcome from this project where, for the first time, you start to see this inter uh, uh, interaction between local young people and uh, local young African in our center. They start to chat, they start to talk, and it has give a little bit confidence from those children, or young people, to feel that or oh, this person is no longer strange, it's my friend, and you can, this can go out even um, where they live, on the streets, they start to chat hello. So from us, we've identified that's the key way where we can start to build our work and achieve 
our goal. As a barrister, Tayyip decided to further develop his knowledge in law. He studied at Teesside University where he qualified as a master in criminal law. He is now a tireless advocate on human rights, helping destitute Iraqi asylum seekers with their immigration cases. Especially that after the change in the policy of the government of t turning down the, the legal aid fund uh, from the legal representative, this has affected also the people who they are seeking asylum in this country. And uh, members of my community as well suffered from that uh, policy. Uh, most of them, I can say, 95% after the initial interview, their case would turn down and uh, the legal representative uh, refused to take their case further. Despite they give them the right to appeal, but uh, they can't take the case. And this is not because the weakness of their cases. I think this is because of the, the poor legal advice they are receiving. Within that case, these people, they asking me to help them with the filling the ground of appeal because there is a deadline. If they wouldn't do it within that time, then they, their case is already refused. And this time it would be completely reject the case and they don't have any right at all to stay here. And they are frightened, they are scaring because at any point they are expecting to be taken by the immigration people and to be detained and sent into the country which is in the first place, they fled from that country because they had a fear. Therefore, when they came to me, they are desperate to, to get that help. Despite I am not an expert in immigration law, and my, my expertise is uh, in criminal law, but I have learned a lot through my working within the community and helping these pupils. Therefore, uh, some of the application I helped them was uh, successful and uh, they take into consideration. This is proof that there is a lack of advice by the legal representative. Sarah, too, has become a champion of individuals who need help. She is the chairperson of the Afghan British Community Association in Sunderland and has to deal with a whole range of issues. Sometimes in, uh, people in the community they have a, a scare to go uh, straight away to speak with the police face to face. But I'm organizing uh, this events and I ask for the whole community. They have problem with the housing or with the jobs or with the um, anything. And I ask from the police and I ask from the uh, job center and also from the council, from the different organization they are dealing with this issue. They are just talking face to face with the people and they get their solution. And um, my purpose uh, to holding this activity to integrate uh, these people with the society. The Akan Community Center host many activities. It brings together many organizations working with the African community, not only in Newcastle, but also in the wider Northeast. We have uh, organized event where more than 100 people come together to the center, white, black, Asia, people around, majority around the East End. We had a chance as uh, our councillor, Nick Kemp have joined to this event in the show where there is African dance, where there is African food and uh, English food, and they try to bring a community to, uh, together. We are doing a great job here uh, in te terms of activities or consultation where we welcome other organizations. They come to deliver service within the African community to our center. We are so thankful and grateful to Street Warden and uh, to the police force, the support to the work they've been doing with us to try to resolve some conflict problem in Baika. I see Gabby at lots of events, you know, and he, he's speaking on behalf of the community, but not, not just African, he speaks on behalf of Baika. So my point of a cane is, I see it as a building. It's a resource for the community because 
it's it's there the doors are open they have activities on and it's not just for the african community because i've saw many times when they've had open sessions where it's just everybody's yeah having a great time the neighborhood it's in it's it's a really deprived area to start with and having the mix that he's made it's it's he's made a real achievement in that and it's it's working out not just in baker but it's it's moving out towards the rest of the east end and it's showing people that people can work together and live together and they don't have to fight over what's there because it's there to share. It, it's now becoming word of mouth that this isn't the place to target anymore, this is the place to come to. Here in Sunderland, Sarah's activities are various, from knitting classes to trips to London. Uh, for more than uh, four years, I'm organizing this um, swimming lesson uh, for the lady. I organize uh, sewing courses also uh, and also knitting for the lady. I establish a football team for the refugee asylum seeker. So every year, uh, twice, sometimes uh, three times a year, I organize an um, educational trip for the children and family uh, to the historic places in the uh, UK. I take the children to the Beamish Museum and uh, to the uh, London Science Museum. Um, and also I take the children to the London Zoo again this year. And very good for the children because they are learning about the animal life and uh, biology, the history of the UK, and also they make a friends. It's very good. It's people very, very enjoy and very, very happy. There are now 40 refugee community groups here in the Northeast, coming from different continents, Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, Eastern Europe, and Asia. They have created the Regional Refugee Forum Northeast to act collectively to influence policies and practice in the region and even in the national level. In each local area, refugee community groups offer work in partnership with the voluntary and the community sector. Taib, Sara, and Gabi are all united through the Regional Refugee Forum. For many years, Taib has been a member of the Independent Advisory Group for the Cleveland Police participating in decision-making at Cleveland Police Headquarters. Taib also contributed to many key conferences here in the UK. I've been involved in many conferences and events across the region and the national levels as well. It was very helpful because I heard the, the views of the government about the integration and also the government learned from us the practical example which helped the policy makers to uh, structure the policy in the light of our views and they took into consideration our views because we were in the community and we would know what policy would be effective if they would make it. Uncovering talent and encouraging it is a passion for the next person we will meet. Apollina is a 29-year-old from Burkina Faso. He was a professional goalkeeper and a master in Taekwondo. In 2000, after political involvement, Apollina was forced to leave his country and to seek for safety here in the UK. On arrival here, he got involved in martial arts and won a gold medal in the national championship representing Teesside University. Apolline also played for Darlington Football Club for a while, but suffered a serious back injury which dashed his dreams. This setback didn't stop his football ambition. He has gone on to train as a football coach to help youngsters from deprived families to build a career in football. Apolline also works as a community support worker for the International Family Center in Stockton. His story includes a remarkable friendship with a 16-year-old local white boy called John Owen. John was the only local white boy who befriended not just Apolline, but also a group of asylum seekers who were dispersed to live in Tonabi. Back then, in some areas, local people didn't make things easy for newly arrived asylum seekers to feel at home. But tragically, a year after befriending and playing football with them, 
John died. This great lost friendship has led Apollinaire to organize an annual charitable event and called it the John Owens Trophy to remember him. The event has been running for two years and is growing bigger every year. The reason that we call it John Owens Trophy is because all of us together feel like that we, we own John something because he played a crucial role for our integration and uh, we all decided to call the trophy after him. We can pay what we own him, but we think that doing that, we can keep him alive in our heart and because he means a lot to, to all of us. It's a good initiative. People feel that, yeah, we need that. It's uniting people. They prefer to call it even uh, uh, John Owens uh, Football Festival <laughs> because uh, what we do, we, we got um, entertainment. It's about bringing community together with uh, symbolizing what uh, uh, John, a 16-year-old, he also played a role, so it's to express the, the unity. There's more that uh, unites us than divides us, so we need to be together. So we do more than just a football match. In his work as a football coach, Apolline set up Africa Sport Embassy to help children from deprived families to have a bright future through football. Eight years ago when I first arrived, there were Afro-Caribbean community here, but it's now a big uh, community and uh, I think uh, we are responsible of uh, the future of uh, uh, those young kids. Uh, what I thought is, hang on, I've got uh, uh, some qualification and uh, uh, talent in, in sport that I can share with young people. So uh, I said, right, part of my contribution is uh, to try to help uh, those youngsters, uh, gather them with a uh, football sport or field to see if uh, yeah, we can create opportunity to get them off the street and uh, also help them to prepare for a better future. When uh, we organize a Start With Africans, now it's a mix. First, let me tell you that the talent, the quality I discovered with those, uh, those young people is just, it's just unbelievable. Africa's Port Embassy has participated in various football tournaments and even won few titles. Two of Apollinaire's boys are now on trial with Middlesbrough Football Academy. It looks very likely they will achieve their dreams of becoming professional footballers. Sarah organizes cultural events for communities living in Sunderland, including the newly arrived Polish community. Sometimes I'm organizing celebration in a fashion show. And I ask from different uh, community to put their own dresses because every country has their own culture. And I ask from one of the ladies, she's Polish, she, she has very, very nice uh, dresses. We introduce uh, our own culture, their culture for the local community. From the power of sport to that of the art to bring diverse communities together, Despite his stressful work with human rights, Tayyip also organizes traditional dances in different venues and public places. He has personal reasons for doing so. We have been participated in many cultural events, in town hall, in town center, and uh, as soon as they start in the, the dancing, everybody would join them. And uh, they asking us to, to do it again, or the people ask when, when you're doing your next activities, can you ask us to come again? You can see how relief it is uh, when you see others uh, appreciate what you are doing. Of course, uh, staying at your home, it will cause you a lot of mental health issues. And by doing that, we will help these people at least have a, a bit relief and a bit uh, entertainment and enjoyment in their life as well. Uh, the reasons for doing that is to, to change the people perceptions towards asylum seekers and to see that, looking at us as a human, to see that we have also something to share. It's about also trying to uh, let people come back on the perception of uh, uh, seeing some of uh, ethnic uh, minorities as, uh, you know, people who don't have uh, much quality. If uh, John Owens at its age can see that, you know, color is just color, um, and a human being is just a human being, but you can get uh, uh, the best out of uh, each individual here because uh, we, we can contribute uh, positively as well. 
For many years already, those of us who have come to live here in the Northeast have organized annual festivals to promote cultural diversity of the region. L'Afrique à Newcastle is one of these events. Internationally renowned African musicians are invited to stage public concerts in towns and cities. Thousands of people take part in these festivities. It means local people get the chance to see performances thanks to the region's new communities. The aim is to celebrate and promote understanding of different cultures through arts and to support the development of strong community relations. But one person beats his drum all year around, and this is Hile. Hile Anyama is a 40-year-old teacher from Togo. In 2000, he fled his country and sought refuge in the UK. Soon after his arrival, Hile got involved in various community activities and has founded the Teesside World Drummers. We're from various um, background, ethnicity, and, and all this is, but we just, it, it happened that we all share that love of drum in common. That, that's how we, we started this group. And then later, people started joining. It's quite a big group we have now. I think uh, people talk a lot about integration, community cohesion, and all this multiculturalism in this country. But for me, this is simple. It's just to bring people together. So we like friends here, helping each other if we can. Some of our members are seeking asylum. So you see the tremendous support from people in this group. Even people using their own money to help others who have no income. So it's, it's something great we have here. All these people, they're, they're very, very good people with good hearts. We've played in prisons in here around. We've played in um, medical centers for people with uh, mental disability. We've played with children. It's, for us, it's a way to give back to the community. Many of us who arrived here as part of the dispersal policy have now become British citizens, but have eight years been long enough to make us feel at home here in the Northeast? Or will that take much longer? We want to see um, members of the African community feel that they're at home in Northeast. That's our main goal. We want someone can say, no, no, I'm from Northeast. Even he's African. If he's in black, he said, I'm from the Northeast. He knows where he lives. Because that's the integration. At the end, when we are talking about integration, it's where someone said, no, no, yeah, I'm from Newcastle. I'm from Middlesbrough. I'm from Sunderland. Because he has connection. I don't do my activities as uh, Ile, the Togolese, or Ile, the African doing activities in Minnesbrough. I am part of the community here. Uh, my wife is from Minnesbrough. My children are from Minnesbrough. So I don't see myself as an outsider doing things in the community. I feel more than home here because I have home and I have a safety. We have a Kurdish saying, which it say, when you drink water in a water source, you never throw in stone into the source. When I came to the um, UK, I was in London. When the Home Office decided to send me to Sunderland, I was very nervous um, because uh, people scaring me and told don't go to Sunderland because it's very racist. But anyway, I decided to come to Sunderland. I think it's very nice people, it's very friendly. I didn't have any problem in the last seven years. But Sarah's experience is sadly not true for all in Sunderland. Many people have suffered racism and hostility. Seven years ago, an Iranian was murdered in a racist attack. Refugee community groups have a unique reach within their own communities. It is this reach which means that they are ideal partners for the agencies looking to deliver services to refugee and asylum seekers especially the number of the members of my community in the area are increased 
of course, uh, their needs are increased as well. That's why it's a very urgent need for our community to have a fund in order to run the office and uh, to continue to help in others and also because uh, uh, we will ease the pain from the other agencies and organizations by helping these people from our side. If you don't get fund, therefore we have to close the office. But that it doesn't mean we don't help people. We would still help people, but we have to get back to the past, which I hope not, to helping people from our houses. This is a challenge we are facing. If we had two, three workers, we'd do better. That's the reality. It makes it difficult for not having the training ground that we know that, yeah, this is ours, that's where we can go and practice. The aim in the future is first to try to, to get uh, the team in the league. The reason we didn't take the chance to get in the league is because it's really costly to to be in the league with young people and uh, also another thing that uh, we will be looking in the future is try to develop more than just football, develop, uh, extend, create the opportunity on other sports for those young people. We said we are a bridge, that's our role. To deliver it, we need partnership work. All I need is to have hands around me. When we say about hands, it's uh, 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 those partners. We haven't seen a, a very good uh, networking uh, in sport related to African young people. But that's something that uh, we also think that is uh, is needed, and uh, we are working to try to build. This uh, working partnerships with uh, different football clubs and uh, local junior academies in order to give a chance, equal opportunity to um, every young person. There has been significant change in progress in many aspects of life since 2000, thanks to the commitment of various agencies and individuals. But what do we need to do to tackle today's problem here in our region? As we celebrate the contribution made by newcomers to life in the Northeast, there is so much more we can achieve together for the future. This film has been made by Khalapum Abdullahi. Khalapum Abdullahi was an artist, journalist and political activist from Chad. He came to the UK in 2000 and was part of the government dispersal policy where he was dispatched to live in the North East. Khalapum, also known as Abdul, is now a British citizen. He set up the Chadian Community Association and was heavily involved in voluntary activity in the region. In 2005, he received an achievement award from the community champion for his contribution to the North East. Three years ago, Abdul resumed his media activities and produced a number of documentary films and also worked for the BBC. Abdul created North Film Productions and now works as a freelance documentary film producer. 